Welcome to the Small Business Blueprint, a podcast for local business owners who are looking to reach sustainable growth. In each episode, you'll hear directly from small business owners and leaders who have navigated the changes and setbacks that outline their unique blueprint to small business success. So join us to learn how you can turn their stories into actionable steps to transform your business into an established brand in your community. Welcome into the Small Business Blueprint Podcast. This is Alex, your host. And tonight we have someone I'm very excited to talk to, um, Mr. Mario Flores with MND Automotive Management based out of San Diego, um, a place that is very near and dear to my heart. Um, Mario, thank you so much for joining us here tonight. Oh, thank you for having me. Uh, definitely appreciate it. Excited to be on here and just talk. You got it, man. First ever podcast. We'll keep it nice and light yeah. and loose and <laughs> yeah. have a good time. Um, good. First thing I wanted to ask you about, uh, number one, tell us the story of MND Automotive Management. I know before we, we hit the fancy record button here, we were talking before this and um, you, you've been to a couple of different places. You've done some different things. How did you get into you know, the mobile detailing, the mobile automotive space? And, and how did you come about MND Automotive Management? So um, a quick kind of brief summary of how I got to this point where I'm at today. It's um, I've been raised in the automotive industry. My family, like my brothers, I have two older brothers and my dad, uh, they're automotive uh, painters. So they work for collision repair shops. And that's kind of where I started uh, my career in uh, working in a body shop. Uh, okay. And I was exposed to the mobile detailing aspect of it when I was younger through another guy that would come in the shop and do uh, work. And that kind of piqued my interest then. Um, and it always stuck in the back of my head. But then I just progressed along with my career uh, working in a body shop uh, from a body shop going into the insurance industry part of things, uh, working as an appraiser, as a fraud investigator. And um, eventually this came about as a quote unquote side hustle, as many call it nowadays. So, um, you know, there's um, situations within our own personal life that, you know, I had to pick up some extra uh, work and just, you know, continue to make some money. Uh, and, you know, this was what came about. That's where I was like, hey, you know what? It's it's time to maybe start what I've always thought about doing, which is the mobile detailing aspect of it. And so uh, I started as a side hustle. So I was working kind of like a full time job and doing this on the side whenever I could. Uh, and happy to say that this year in June, I actually officially resigned from my full time uh, nine to five and dove head on into this. And it's it's been going great, you know, truly blessed, grateful. And and here I am today just running as a full time business. Love it. Congratulations. Yeah. Thanks. Um, yeah. That's one of the things I. I know a lot of people that don't own a small business never fully understand is a lot of times a small business starts off as a side as a side business. It's mm -hmm. not necessarily designed to be your full time position. How did you get to that point where you knew that this is what you wanted to do? Um, so it, it kind of happened <laughs> by chance. So I got a promotion within my company. Um, and I've always had a really relaxed environment at work cause I work from home. Um, uh, my okay. environment's always been remote, you know, just, I get my assignments, I would go out and work and then I got promoted into a different, uh, opportunity and I just couldn't get along with management. <laughs> and so, <laughs> and so I've never been exposed to that. And that kind of like really, really made me focus or, or gear my focus towards my business. And I said, you know what? I don't really want to deal with that management and just having that micromanagement all over me. And so um, I just focused on this and took off and just started being heavily active and promoting on social media platforms and so forth. And the work was just coming. And then, you know, eventually it, it sink or swim, to be honest. So in June, uh, I just sent in my resignation letter. It was just a lot of momentum building up in the summer. For mobile detailers, it's one of the busiest seasons. Mm -hmm. It's during the summer. So I was like, you know, I just got to take advantage of this opportunity. And so I just resigned and have been going nonstop since. Love it. Love mm -hmm. to hear that. And I know the other thing that's really unique about your business, your business particularly, is there's tons of companies out there that do mobile detailing specifically. Mm -hmm. um, and, and it's only grown during the pandemic, which I also want to want to ask you about. But 
one of the things that makes you guys unique is you do more than just mobile detailing. What are some of the other services that you all offer? And why did you guys decide to go with this multi-prong approach of not only the mobile detailing, but all these other services that you have to offer as well? So we, our primary service that we do is a mobile detailing. You know, we go to you. Right. Uh, we also uh, are working in the background on different aspects. So like if someone will, you know, we deal with a lot of people that want to sell the car. So we maintain that. And then uh, we put it on our platform. You know, we help people sell the cars. So we kind of act as a middleman, I guess what you'll say, a broker. Um, okay. and so we deal with that just in helping facilitate people look for cars or people will reach out to us and be like, hey, do you know anyone that's selling a car and so forth? And so since we're connected in with all these people that are, have cars or are looking for cars and buying cars, it's easier for us to make those connections within the people. Uh, also, we just uh, do a lot of referral based uh, business as well. So people would um, say, hey, do you know um, who can paint this or who can do my window tan or who can fix this dent? Uh, and we have a network that we're involved with that we refer people out and you know make those and help facilitate those connections. And that's something that eventually we want to grow more and promote more and advertise more because it's kind of done in the background right now, but it's something that eventually, you know, we want to be more involved with. Okay. Awesome. Mm -hmm. I love that. Mm -hmm. As someone who just recently sold their car, um, you know, going from San Diego to New York city, you don't really need a car out here. So I had to sell mine <laughs> yeah. and I got it detailed before I sold it. Mm -hmm. And the, you know, the first thing that the guy told me that detailed it was, hey, do you have a buyer for this? Like, it, you know, I, cause I told him, like, yeah, I'm getting ready to detail it. I need to sell it. Mm -hmm. He was like, hey, do you need I have people that are looking to buy um, this was yeah. in Colorado, oddly yeah. enough, too. So the fact that you mentioned this is like it's it seems like it's a growing aspect of the mobile detailing space, especially with the way that the market is right now. Do you, are you guys seeing like an influx in those um, type of referrals. I, I'm guessing there's probably more demand than there is supply at the moment. Yeah, there is. So um, I deal with a lot of people that are right now currently buying like salvage cars or auction cars and going in there and buying them and kind of turning around and flipping them. Uh, and they're, they're selling quick, just like the housing market, you know, the, the auto industry, especially the used car market right now, it's, it's, hot it's, crazy. Uh, it's hot it's crazy and so a lot of people are getting involved in that it's funny that you mentioned or we're talking about this because i just got a message last night from a regular client he's like hey you know i'm looking to buy a car uh, give me a specific amount what he was looking for you know just let me know if you know anybody or any of your clients are selling their cars so uh it makes it easier because we we don't have to go out and look for it we run into these people we just throw a post up and a lot of people will just send us dm saying hey i got my car or if I remember that someone's trying to sell the car, I'll reach out. Hey, are you still trying to sell this car? I think I have someone that might want to buy it. So uh, it, stuff is selling quick out there right now. And people are getting great deals for their trade-ins. So, you know, they're going in and getting the new cars because they're getting a lot more than what they typically would get uh, on their trade-in. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I know that the market right now is crazy when it comes to yeah. the used car market. Yeah. <laughs> like, I know when we sold sold my car, we put it up on Craigslist and it was up for like maybe an hour mm -hmm. and we found someone that was willing to you know willing to buy it at the price that we listed it for. I was like, wow, okay, that's pretty cool. Um yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. it happened so fast. Um going back to the pandemic, did you guys I know you mentioned that you really decided to go full time um during this this past summer. Mm -hmm. When you were, I guess, let me ask you this. Were you doing this business during the pandemic? As yeah. Well? So, so we start, I started, um, actually November 3rd was our three year anniversary from when I, the first customer I took in, uh, nice. Congratulations. I, thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah. So it was three years. So, uh, like I said, a year ago, November is kind of when I really focused full tilt on it and just really started uh, doing it heavily. And then, like you said, uh, you know, the, the pandemic hit. Um, so that was, I, I guess, new, but it was easy to adapt because we we dealt with cleaning. We dealt with sanitizing. So we were kind of doing that a little bit of already. Um, and a lot of people, it, it, it kind of blew up because a lot of people were staying home. Uh, so they weren't going out. So, you know, a lot of people were really worried about, you know, the, vir the viruses, germs, whatever it is. 
Uh, and so we're getting called out to do like deep cleaning and, and you know, we do steam clean. So we're doing a lot of steam cleaning, a lot of these vehicles. Um, we adapted to it because a lot of people didn't want to interact with you. A lot of people were very wary of talking to you. So mm -hmm. we developed a system or, or adapted a system where people would leave the keys inside the car somewhere accessible where we would have no contact and we do the um, contactless payment options. We do Venmo, Apple Pay, Square, um, you know, or some people would just leave cash inside the vehicle. So it hey, cash is inside the car, go ahead and take it. Uh, so that was good. You know, we typically wear gloves to begin with for the most part. You know, the big difference was wearing the mask uh, and, right. and so forth. So that was something that was, you know, uh, a little on personally for me hard to adapt because it you know it gets hot out here in the summer uh so you're wearing a mask you're working inside hot cars and you know doing a lot of uh, labor but it just made people comfortable knowing that hey you're wearing gloves you're wearing a mask and you're sanitizing the car before you leave you know you're touching the keys you're you know we had a little spray like microband type uh of spray and we just spray it you know and just make sure that everybody was happy and felt comfortable um and so that's how we adapted and we promoted that to people being like hey you can still use us we have contactless options where we don't even gotta meet you you know leave the key outside you know um We'll take care of the rest, send you a text when we're done, leave the key where you want it and walk away. Um, and that's how we did a lot of our business, a lot of our work. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I, I yeah. love that. When, and I know during the pandemic as well, this whole industry totally blew up because like you mentioned, a lot of people were home more. Mm -hmm. They had some people even had some extra income coming in. Mm -hmm. And when you are home more, you start to notice those little things, right? Like mm -hmm. I, I know... Um, home improvement projects went through the roof. Mm -hmm. um, cleaning your cleaning your car more often because you might not be spending that much time in it, but when you are in it, you want it to be clean. Mm -hmm. uh, or it was something that had been put on the back burner because people were too busy. But now that they're at home, they can have somebody come by and clean it. Yeah. Um, have you seen a, an uptick in competition as well? And have you how have you even even deeper than that? How have you maintained what you guys are doing? And staying above the competition, um, and, and especially with the influx of more mobile detailing companies coming into the space. Um, so it, it, it's uh, I'll, I'll dive into a little deeper into that, that the answer as well. So um, I think what's benefited us, like I said, we've been three years was uh, in November, so we've been steadily building that clientele up for the last you know two years just a steady clientele where we have a lot of which they call like legacy customers right. that have been with us from the beginning and most of our work comes from a referral based system we don't advertise we don't promote outside of just instagram and facebook um so most of our work comes from referrals you know so uh we try to be trusted you know you know we work on that trust on gaining that trust so a lot of people feel comfortable with us that they, they continue to use us it's uh, people uh, that we deal with for whatever reason, the word carries a lot. And so when they, we get referred out, we get that work and we just try to win that trust. Uh, we just try to, you know, treat each customer like it's the first time we're dealing with it all the time, you know, just giving that great customer service. Um, with the competition, as you mentioned, uh, when we first started, one of the biggest issues I think I had was being on social media, looking at all the other details and seeing what they were doing. And I was like, oh, man, this guy's doing this or, oh, man, that person's doing that. And I always just felt like I needed to keep up and try to duplicate what they did. Uh, the minute I stopped caring what everybody else was doing, <laughs> it, it, it's kind of when I just zoned out, figured out my own system and just took off, you know. Uh, so that is something that, you know, at. I guess advice I could give is just like, you know, with all the competition, it's good to keep an eye on it. But don't focus too much on it. Focus on what product you're selling, what you're trying to do, and focus on your own customer base and, and you know, just stay in your lane. And, and that lane will take you places. I love that. I love mm -hmm. that. Well, if you don't mind my asking, was what was one trick or one tip that you figured out in that system um, that worked for you that that maybe wasn't something that you saw from anybody else? What was what would be one thing that you recommend to people? Um, especially that are looking, whether it be social media in general or running your business, what is one tip you would give to somebody that was not something you saw some, from somebody else, but something you just learned along the way? Um, just being open to 
uh, try new things, you know, especially with all the platforms that are coming out, you know, uh, online on social media, take advantage of that, you know, because a lot of people are scared to get involved with like TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, you know, there's so many different apps out there where you can promote your business on different platforms for free. Mm -hmm. And it's just figuring that out on your own and using those to your advantage is one of the biggest things that, you know, I think I, I recommend to people uh, and just focus on you, focus on your business, you know, on what you want to do. Um, and, you know, eventually I think you will get there, um, you know, if you just really put that, that focus on it. I love yeah. that. I love yeah. that. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, we've talked to, at this point, I've talked to dozens of, of small business owners. What's your favorite story? It can be funny. It can be, can be, uh, something that just stuck with you. What's your favorite customer story that you have from your small business? I think it, it has to be, uh, you know, um, well, a couple of things. One is my first customer, <laughs> you know, and, and I and, and I still have that guy's number saved and his photos and everything, you know, and it, it's just because uh, it's just when, you know, when you go full tilt and you're like, man, I'm going to actually do this. And you get that first response or that first message. Hey, I would like to book you for a service. You know, it's kind of like it's the icebreaker, you know, it's the most rewarding feeling I think I've ever felt where I was like, man, someone wants to use our service. And then once we we're done with that service, you know, seeing that that customer was happy. And fortunately to this day, that person still uses our services, you know? So, um, I think for me, that's the greatest experience and, and just the greatest accomplishment that, you know, just going through that first hurdle of getting that first customer and, and that was it, you know? Um, I think another rewarding feeling for me is just uh, we're based here in the South Bay, San Diego area, uh, East Lake Chula Vista, is the community out of here and the support that uh, we got initially when we started this was amazing. You know, and we're not originally from here. We're originally from L.A. So coming out here and then just this city kind of just neighbor taking us on and taking us under their wing and showing that support, that was, that was an amazing feeling as well. Awesome. If you don't mind my asking, mm -hmm. where did you find the first customer? Was it like a, was it a friend? Was it a family member? No. So going back to the social media platforms that are free, uh, it was on the Nextdoor app. You know, okay. uh, uh, I went on there and I said, hey, you know, uh, we're starting a, a small business. This is what our, we're doing. This is our services. Please share, reach out to people. If anyone needs us, reach out to us. And that's where it all came through initially was through that app. And we got um, uh, a wealth of response and support. And then our first probably about five to six customers came through there, you know. Okay. Um, and so that that was exciting for us. I love that. I love that. Mm -hmm. I, Nextdoor has really turned into a place where, you know, small businesses can find customers. And um, so shout out to Nextdoor for not only helping helping you, Mario, but small businesses yeah. across across the country. Uh, my last question for you: If you could go back and do it all over again, what's the number one piece of advice you would give to yourself or anybody else out there that's starting a small business? Uh, for me, it would be uh, don't overthink it uh, to start sooner. Um, there's there's a comment I saw on social media last night where they said, hey, you know, if you could go back, similar question, uh, and do your career all over again, what would you do? And I was like, not have a career and start this a lot sooner, you know, because <laughs> um, uh, I think that was my biggest hurdle was overthinking it. I want the best equipment, the best van, the best product. And when I finally just pulled the trigger, I, I literally walked into Walmart and spent maybe $150 on equipment, on supplies. Uh, the most I spent was on a generator, you know, that I needed, which was $400 and everything else was just, I was working out of my wife's Kia Nero at the time. Yeah. Um, and I just loaded everything up and, and I went and from there, eventually I, I grew and bought more equipment, bought better, uh, products and so forth. Uh, so the, you know, just don't overthink it. If you, you know, just do it, you know, and then everything else will fall into place and, you know, you'll start figuring that out as you learn. I love that. That's great advice. Mm -hmm. It's great advice for anybody out there looking to start a small business. Uh, Mario, tell us where we can find all the, all this great social media help. Um, where, where can we find you? Where can we find your business? 
Um, I know you're located in San Diego, so if you are in the San Diego area, feel free to to contact MND Automotive Management for any detailing and automotive needs. But wh- where can our um, our listeners find you if they want to learn more about your business and who you are? Uh, so we're heavily active on Instagram, so it's at MND Auto SD. Um, and then also through Facebook, uh, we're also on there through M and D auto SD. Uh, we recently just started a TikTok, So we're same hashtag at M and D auto SD. Um, and then, you know, anybody based in San Diego, we're also on Yelp. If you want to check out some of our reviews, it's under M and D automotive management. Um, and definitely check us out and, and look forward to hopefully meeting some, some of your listeners. Absolutely. Yeah. Let them know that the small business blueprint podcast sent you. Um, if you are yeah, in the San Diego yeah. area, uh, Mario, thank you so much for joining us. I know I'll be following along, see where you guys go from here. And I really appreciate you joining us here this evening. Great. Right. Thank you, Alex. I appreciate being here. Thank you. Thanks for listening to the Small Business Blueprint. If you enjoyed this episode, make sure to follow along on Apple, Spotify, or your favorite podcast app. This podcast is brought to you by GoSight, an all-in-one platform that makes it easier for your customers to find, book, and pay for your services online instantly. Get started for free at GoSight.com.